Brakes.com. Brakes starting at just 100 bucks. When you donate and shop, good will happen. You know, we live in a world of emails, and if you are like me and you get a lot of them, sometimes you think, if I have to read one more, I'm going to scream. <laughs> and luckily for me, I opened an email the other day, and it was from our next guest. Her name is Sharon Wadley, and she has written a book called Somewhere Over the Rainbow, The Sunshine Comes After the Rain. Good to have you here this morning. Thank you so much for having me. I'm going to set you up, and then I'm going to let you talk. So okay. Sharon wrote this very tender email to me, and she said, I really hope that you'll consider having me on because you've had quite a life story I, yes I have and you could have easily kind of buried it Sharon and just gone on and done your thing mm -hmm. but you didn't want to you wanted to take what you've experienced and use it for good yes and that's what you've done with this book yes so okay I'm gonna let you kind of tell your tale but you struggled like so many people do with alcohol mm -hmm. addiction is that right yes alcohol and drug addiction and you told me that you just finally got tired. Yes, I got tired of being sick and tired. So when you began your journey, and, and part of it, and you don't want to shy away from this, oh, no. was that your faith guided you through? Yes. Uh, go ahead. You're yes, right. yes, it was my faith that guided me through. I knew my great, my great grandmother raised me as a young child, and she brought me up in the church, and she always made sure that um, I knew about God and I knew who he was. And so in my weakest moments, I knew that God could do for me what I couldn't do for myself. And so I turned to him, you so know. So how long, when did this happen for you? When did this 180 happen for you? Uh, I was around 49 years old. Okay. And then what compelled you to finally write the book? Um, it was God's timing. People would often ask me, when are you gonna write the book? Every time they hear my story, see, I go different places, share my story. I've been like um, the Chattanooga Room in the Inn, um, Chattanooga Rescue Mission, the Community Kitchen, different places, whoever will open their doors and let me in, I will share. Now there are some people that have not opened their doors and would not let me in, but um, wherever I can go, whoever will listen and take the time to let me come in, I want to share. Did the writing for you prove to be therapeutic? Yes, I love to write. Clearly, um, you're a good writer. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, I love to write. It is therapeutic, and also um, I do a lot of writing. I have a writing ministry um, that I write inmates that are incarcerated and also college students that are away from home. So I don't want to get I don't want to get too much into the past because the whole point of our conversation is how you can look ahead to a future yes. and build it to be what you want. Mm -hmm. But when mm -hmm. you were going through this. Did you kind of have to address some past things for yourself and at least confront them? When I was going through the addiction? Yeah, well, yes, and then the recovery part of it. Was part of your recovery confronting what you had struggled with? Yes, but I never not confronted it. That was never, um, I was never shamed. I was never embarrassed or none of that. The blessing is where God has brought me from. Did you have times, and I know if I was to thumb through the book, I bet you would reference this, mm -hmm. where you felt that nudging from God and you just kind of said, nope, not yet, and you turned away? Yeah, there were often times um, when I did, but to be honest about it, I liked getting high. I, I, I liked it, I enjoyed it. I tried to um, tell myself sometimes, well, maybe it's recreational or whatever, but um, I was in denial. You know, we live in a time now, Sharon, where it seems like young people have it at their fingertips more easily than ever before. Yes. And they kind of do tend to have a shoulder shrug of saying, well, all my friends do it. Mm -hmm. Would you tell them that that's a dangerous mindset? It is. Peer pressure. And I talk a little bit about that in the book. It's a few life lessons in there and stuff. To not be a follower, you know, just to be your own person and do you and just be who God created you to be. Because it's so easy to get caught up. Mm-hmm. Well, did you... You know, if you're a person of faith, I think regardless of what that faith is, you're a big believer in second chances. Yes. That's the whole point of it, right? Yes. Is that you can be redeemed. Yes. And yet we tend to not give that same grace to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Was that true for you? Yes. Yes. It was true for me. But you know, there's hope and it's never too late. And that's what I want people to know. I want people to know um, the goodness of the Lord and the power of God because there is hope. And it is never too late. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think sometimes, too, um, each of us experiences our faith in our own way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can shout it too loudly. 
and yes. it can turn people off. Yes. You're not doing that. No, I really don't want to try to shove God down anybody's throat or whatever. I can only share my experiences and tell what I know, and I know it to be real because I've lived it. Well, I don't know what made you finally send that email to me, and I don't know what grace came upon me that day to open the email because I get a lot of them, and it's kind of a joke around here that I'm bad about opening them, mm -hmm. but I'm so glad that I did yours. Where can people get your book? Um, the book is on Amazon, and also people can get the book from me. Um, my um, email is alan.sharon. 14 at yahoo.com. My phone number is 423-903-1178. They can get it directly from me. I would be more than happy to autograph it personally, or you can get it directly from Amazon, and I will still autograph it. <laughs> if people if people want to join you in the ministry, the writing ministry you have with mm -hmm. the inmates, are you looking for people to help with that? Um, I'm not it? directly looking for that, but I feel like um, if it happens, it happens. Yeah. We want genuine people that really care and, you know, have a heart for people and want to make a difference. And yes, I will welcome that. This would probably be a great thing to to get and just tuck in. If you're about to send a teenager off to college or something, it's written like a friend. Yes. It's, it's just like you've gotten a letter from somebody you've known for a long time and just a little bit of advice to share with you. There's nothing finger wagging. It's not difficult. It's very conversational mm -hmm. and it's short. It's short. So it's not intimidating. No, it's not. And it's easy and plain to read. I've had someone to tell me that it's just as plain as a, you know, a kid could read it. Thank you for coming into our life today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's for a having real pleasure. Me. So again, the book is called Somewhere Over the Rainbow. If you just Google it, you can find it on Amazon. Yes. Uh, you're also welcome to write to me, and I can share with you uh, Sharon's email address, and uh, we'll see if we can help her story touch more and more people for good. Yes. Thank you so Thank much you. for having me. <laughs> there 